I'm Madeline Apsher and my informative speech topic is car seats and their safety features. So a lot of people ask, what is a car seat? A car seat is a portable device for a baby or young child that is designed to secure them in a passenger seat belt. So for the car seat I have in front of me, we have a convertible car seat. Um, car seats now often look like this, but they do have evolution. They begin in the early 1900s, some of them looking like a box that a child would sit in. Now, car seats often look like this, or they look like a infant carrier, which I'm sure most people have seen. They also can look like a booster seat or a high back booster. So the basic vocabulary of a car seat is the five point harness, which is the harness that secures a child. This is in an infant seat, a convertible seat, or a forward facing harness seat. There is the seat belt that passes on the belt path. There is a latch system that can be used to secure the car seat in a vehicle up until about 35 pounds. And then there is the top tether mount that is used to secure any forward facing seat that is a five point harness and so forth. And then there's the chest clip. The chest clip is to always be armpit level and that is very important. We will show this with Eloise, my sweet baby doll. So why are car seats important? Car seats prevent the leading cause of death in young children, which is motor vehicle crashes. The car seat takes the seat belt impact and distributes it evenly across the car seat so that the child feels the least amount of impact. Next, infant seats. So I'm gonna talk about like the different types of car seats. The first one is infant seats. Infant seats are rear facing only, and they usually have a bay can, and most can be installed with a seat belt. They rear face and usually hold a child up until about 25, 30 pounds. In all infant seats though, an inch at the top of the shell is required for it to be safely used by a child. Also, all infant seats have a five point harness. The next type is a convertible car seat, which I have in front of me. A convertible car seat can be rear facing or forward facing. Most convertible car seats can actually be used from the weight of four pounds, which is the size of a newborn baby, up until about 50 pounds. Convertible car seats, some of them on the market, actually rear face a child up until 50 pounds. Convertible car seats also be go to forward facing harnesses. And this one I have specifically in front of me and most other ones on the market also become a high back booster and some even go to the no back booster. The next type of car seat we're gonna talk about is a forward facing harness slash booster seat. These are seats that look very similar to this, but they do not go rear facing. They only face forward in the vehicle to help protect the child. They do have a five point harness. Usually you can remove the harness and use them as a high back booster and remove the back and later on use them as a no back booster. The next type is a high back booster. This is a seat that does not come with a harness and all it does is use the vehicle safety belt, seat belt, to harness the child and makes the belt fit correctly for a child that is under the height or weight limit to sit correctly in a vehicle belt safely. The next one is a no back booster. This usually means that the belt is fitting correctly on the shoulder portion of a child, but not correct on the abdomen, which the belt should go across the lap, not across the abdomen. So the booster raises the child's bum so that it correctly fits across the lap. So how to properly install a car seat. For an infant car seat and all convertibles, they have a latch system. The latch system is able to be used usually until about 30 pounds or what the vehicle's latch system allows. So for this one, it has a latch system, but the child that actually uses this seat is overweight for the latch, so we use the belt. The latch system, you place the vehicle, either the car seat either in the rear facing or forward facing position, whichever position the child is old enough to be in, and you click it in, and when you click it in, this button will come up, Click it in and you tighten with the belt strap right here until there is one inch or less of movement at the belt path. So you would click in both sides and pull to tighten. Car seats like this one that are convertible have a 
rear facing belt path or a forward facing belt path, which is up here for this one, you would insert this belt into that to install. The, and hook, if it's forward facing, you would hook the top tether into the seat belt, the vehicle's latch system and tighten also to remove the slack, but not excessively tight to where it is pulling on the seat. For a seat belt install, you would use the same basic principles except with the vehicle seat belt. So you would pass the seat belt through the forward facing belt path or rear facing belt path, depending on how you're installing the car seat. And then if it's forward facing, I would hook the top tether and tighten to loosen. When using the seat belt though, you have to make sure that there is no play in the seat belt. So that means using the locking mechanism on the vehicle and also making sure it is snug and secure and only one inch or less of movement at the belt path to make sure that the seat is secure in the car. So next we're going to talk about best practice versus car seat loss. These are two big deals and big controversies in states across the nation and especially locally here. So for Louisiana, the state law states that a child must be rear facing until the age of one. So that means they either use an infant car seat until the age of one or until the child maxes it out, or they can use a convertible rear face until the age of one and then legally turn them around. Studies have shown that a child's vertebrae do not fully fuse until age two and a half to three. So this means that if a child is forward facing at the age of one, their neck feels 60 times more pressure than if they are rear facing. So best practice is to rear face a child until they max out their seat. So for this specific seat, 50 pounds rear facing is what it allows. And so the best practice would be to keep that child rear facing until they are 50 pounds. A thing to remember though, in a convertible seat especially, is that the straps must be coming from below the shoulder of a child that is rear facing or above the shoulder of a child that is forward facing. So as you can see with my doll, her straps are coming from below her shoulder when correctly tightened and safely. So she would be rear facing in this seat. A forward facing child, like I said, they need to be coming from above. So if she was 50 pounds, we would turn her around forward facing and I would move her straps up a slot so that they were coming from at or above the shoulder. Okay, pause. Best practice for a forward facing seat is to keep a child harnessed as long as possible. This is because when a child is harnessed, no matter the way they are sitting, they are safe in the seat. So whether they're slumping when they're sleeping, whether their head is falling, they are safe. Also a harness, when you get it tight, it needs to pass a pinch test. So you can probably not see this very well here, but her straps are actually not tight enough because I can pinch the slack. Being this car seat's not installed, I probably will not actually get them tight enough to pass the pinch test. But when cor correctly installing or seating a child, their straps always must pass the pinch test forward or rear facing. Next, best practice for a booster seat is when a child can sleep and still maintain head control and is over the age of five, preferably have maxed out a harness seat. The booster seat needs to have the belt going over the child's shoulder correctly and across the lap and not the abdomen. So this means across the legs, upper legs, instead of the belly button area, that area. If it is going above on the abdomen, that is not a correct fit because in a car wreck, that could be pressure on crucial internal organs. Okay, cut. So you may have heard the letter CPST, Child Passenger Safety Technician. This is a person that takes a class for about a week long and learns how to properly install, check, and make sure a car seat has the correct fit on a child. This is a big deal because many people see car seats on the internet, see pictures of them, and they actually are not correctly installed. Example, using the seatbelt and the latch system at the same time using the latch system when it's overweight. A child passenger safety technician is given a certificate that teaches them how to properly install and make sure a child is properly restrained. CPSTs take a, I talked about that, cut. 
car seats and flying. This is a big deal because many people do not understand how unsafe it is for a child to be in arms and the fact of turbulence or an airplane crash during takeoff or landing or even a crash landing over water. A child should always be properly restrained on, a car, on an airplane in a car seat that is FFA approved. A FFA approved car seat will normally have a sticker on the car seat itself and also in the manual. Car seats shouldn't be installed on a plane rear facing if possible. This means using the belt path and installing them with the airplane seat. FFA approved car seats are a huge deal because this keeps the child properly restrained during turbulence, takeoff, landing, and risk of a crash. This avoids the parent having to hold the child during a crash and also keeps the child properly restrained at all times. FFA car seats are not required by law to be used on the plane. If a child is eligible to and under to be infant in arms, you do not have to buy the child a seat and you can choose to hold them in your arms, but it is safest to buy them a seat and properly restrain a child on any flight that is possible. Good. So you may have heard the letter CPST, Child Passenger Safety Technician. This is a person that takes a class for about a week long and learns how to properly install, check, and make sure a car seat has the correct fit on a child. This is a big deal because many people see car seats on the internet, see pictures of them, and they actually are not correctly installed. Example, using the seatbelt and the latch system at the same time. Using the latch system when it's overweight. A child passenger safety technician is given a certificate that teaches them how to properly install and make sure a child is properly restrained. CPSTs take a, I talked about that code. So basically in car seats, there is the main different types with either a harness or using the seatbelt. There is best practices versus laws. Best practice is what is safest for the child versus laws is what the state requires. And CPSTs, Child Passenger Safety Technicians, people that you can find through credited websites to check out your car seat in any state that meets the state standards. Thanks, guys.